Hey guys, today I'm gonna to tell you all about how to get into a big four accounting firm. So I'm gonna assume that a lot of people here watching my videos are actually gonna be college hires. So I wanna walk through the process starting from application all the way through the end. So let's get started. My background. I'm actually a big four consultant. I've actually been working at my current firm for four years and I was hired straight out of college. And in those four years, I've been lucky enough to see the recruitment process and help other people, uh, friends and family get into the big four as well. So these companies I'm talking about, PricewaterhouseCoopers, KPMG, EY, and Deloitte. The process is pretty much similar across the board in all of them. And I feel like I can share these tips and help a lot of other people out there. So let's start with preparation, statistics. GPA, that is a requirement to enter a big four accounting firm. They're gonna read through all the resumes. If your GPA is not higher than 3.3, you're out. Unfortunately, that's the nature of it because it is super competitive. You want to know the company. You pretty much wanna visit all their websites, PwC, etc. see their mission statement, see if there's a framework that they follow, a set of values. Typically, typically they're gonna have like an interviewing page where they tell you all about like, you know, things that they're looking for. Read some of the noteworthy news on the company. Know what you're getting into. Watch some YouTube videos about experience working at the big four. Look at the industry that you're gonna be entering, if it's tax, accounting, assurance, or even advisory, know what this is gonna be like, know what you're getting into because you're probably gonna be working a lot of hours and you're traveling a lot. See if that's the lifestyle that fits you in your um, preparation stage. So let's say you get over that, you're probably gonna be building your resume and you want to have a resume that quantifies the impact of something you've done at a company in the past. So let's say you were an intern at CrowdStrike which is a security company. You could say, I helped develop a program which sped up the uh, processing of malware and viruses by 50%. That's a win. If you can get your resume to say, I did this and, result and that resulted in this number or amount or quantifiable set of impact, that will make a big four recruiter or manager really like you especially if you can talk through that whole process of how you did it and everything, because people will want to know more about that. You're gonna want to tailor your resume to the job description. Of course, that goes for any job, not just big four. Know how your resume is laid out, because if someone else is reading your resume, they're gonna be curious about why you put something in some place. They're even gonna want to know why things are on your resume and why some things are not on your resume. So keep in mind those things. Um, people may want to throw a curveball at you. If you know your resume, you're pretty much good. Cover letter is a additional thing that you're gonna need on top of your resume. It is a letter to the company, EY, KPMG, Deloitte, etc. It's going to describe who you are, what you value, and how the company suits you. You're probably gonna say, I am a valedictorian at this a college and I am a leader of these number of clubs. I have done X number of things which have led to this number of impacts. I value this, I value that, and I see that my values line up with your company and this company will suit me because of these reasons. That should be what your cover letter is like. Then you're gonna want to find your opportunity. So thankfully, most schools are gonna have a career fair in which they're gonna have recruiters come out from the big four and want to get to know you. This is your chance to hand them your cover letter and your resume while looking super suited up and professional. So suit up. And then you're gonna to want to network with people at other major organizations. So you've got to know the recruiter, you've handed them your resume, you've met them eye to eye, but you also want to network with people that work at the firm that you want to enter. So like I was, well, I was a uh, information systems grad in business. There was a group called ISACA, which is a very big group nationwide, and many big four professionals will be there and you could actually meet them and get to know them and their whole process. You can also find people on LinkedIn that can refer you, reach out to them, you know, give them your cover letter and everything, let them know who you are and what you stand for. Some people will be on board with it and even want to refer you. 
Other than that, seek out forums that can help you with this process as well. The application process. There is an online portal and there is also a referral portal. So knowing people will help you get the referral. Going online will help you get your foot in the door. So most people watching this in college, there are typically deadlines around August or September. The moment you enter school, Big Four is already seeking your application. And within the first month, they're probably already closing applications. So know those timelines, get your cover letter, get your resume submitted to that portal. And then as for referrals, let's say you missed that window of August or September, you could reach out to someone that could potentially help you get in using the referral way. So that's where using your connections will really benefit you. So now I wanna take you through the interview prep you will want to understand how you're going to respond to the most typical interview questions. Google is going to be your friend here. You could Google top 100 consulting interview questions, top 100 interview behavioral questions, and you're going to get a lot of hits just from that. Read the interview process on Glassdoor. Read about it on managementconsulted.com. These are resources that are open and free for people like you to read and understand how the interview process went for a lot of other people. If you have other friends or, you know, other videos that you can watch, that will really help you figure out what they're looking for. So just keep an open mind and be, be prepared. You know, it's pretty good to be overprepared than underprepared. So keep that in mind. So let's say you've gone through this whole application process and everything and someone decides to reach out to you for interview. Typically, that's going to be a recruiter. They're going to email saying, when is the best time to speak? You're going to want to reply quickly and let them know your intentions. And then they're going to give you a phone call to screen you. Hey, I am from this company and I'm just here to read over your resume and check your qualifications. Is that okay? You're typically, you're typically going to be on the other side and be like, yeah, that's okay. And then you're going to talk to them about who you are, what you stand for, your values and all this on your resume, recruiters are typically just making sure that you check all the dots on their job description and they can pass you to a manager or director for continuing the interview process. So once you ace that recruiter phone call, you're going to go on to the second interview, which is going to be from a manager or above in the practice that you're um, going to be in. So what they're going to ask you are pretty much technical questions. Given you're in accounting, they might ask you accounting related technical questions like how to file an audit report or SOX compliance or all that stuff. And then if you're in the IT field, they might ask you questions about Java and SQL and database and how would you architect a or design a solution that does something or how do you respond to someone that has um, something else versus something else, so something like that. Um, they test your technical knowledge there. And then if you pass that one, you're going to have the third interview, which is your in-person interview. And this is actually with three sets of people. In most consulting companies nowadays, they even introduce the case study in which you have to read something beforehand. And then when you get there, you're going to have to answer questions in a presentation like timeline format. So use your uh, cognitive thinking skills and figure out how you would organize a presentation end to end to make a point. So three sets of people, you're probably going to meet with a manager, a director, and a partner. The manager is going to hit you up with some technical stuff. Once again, uh, the director is going to hit you with some behavioral stuff, plus the case study stuff. And then the partner just wants to see if you're a good fit for the company. They're going to test your confidence level and see how well you're able to respond to certain topics, things like that. This interview is going to be like a three or four hour day. So I highly recommend that you get some rest and know how you work with teams. Think about experiences you've had in the past, good and bad, and how you've responded to them, because these are things that they're going to be asking you about. You're going to be presented with many scenarios in which you're going to want to be able to respond with a scenario of your own or thoughts of how you would go about it. So pretty much be yourself, be well prepared, be confident, know what's on your resume, and those are pretty much what people look for in a Big Four interview. They want to see that you're a good fit. You want to make them feel comfortable. And also, 
I want you to think of some questions that you can ask them, the manager, the director, and the partner. What are things that you've always wanted to know about a big four company that people haven't really talked about? Like some, some things that they're um, doing, places that they're headed, all of that stuff. Because you want to know that you can fit in their company as much as they want to know that you can fit in their company. So that's pretty much it. That's, the, that's all the advice that I can leave you with. And I'm hoping that this is ultra helpful. If it is, like, comment, subscribe, share. That would really help me out. Let me know where I went wrong. Let me know what I'm missing. Let me know some things that I could do for a follow-up video. Um, that's pretty much it. Good luck on your interview. I hope you get in. Maybe we can work together and that would be pretty cool. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.